If you're thinking about buying a CNC machine, or maybe you just did, and you're wondering, how do I go from blank piece of paper or blank workspace in Carbide Create to a product that is ready to be put into the machine and run? This video is for you. Kevin Barnett in the Carbide 3D Studio, and I wanna show you how my design process works. It's 17 minutes start to finish, but this video is not that long. I speed it up just a little bit. Lots of tips and tricks, lots of ways to think about your next design are contained here. And at the end, I get to something I'm pretty happy with. It's an aluminum project. They're cufflinks. They're little 8-bit ghosts. Lots of good shots of them at the end. I'm going to get you all the way from nothing to completed product. Let's do it. As we dive into Carbide Create, you'll notice this is Pro 732. It is the beta version that is out now. You'll see a new feature in just a moment. You've measured your cufflinks. You know what size circles you have to make to fit inside. 8 millimeters was the radius, 16 total wide. You can also drag and drop your previous art from another project into your current project. Utilize your library of art. That's what I'm doing here. The old Pac-Man project. And I'm going to use this ghost to make something interesting on the cufflink. A little 8-bit action once again. Shrink it down to size and go ahead and zoom in so you can start to manipulate with the alignment tools the placement of your art. You cannot use the alignment tools too much. When it comes to Placing your art finely within the circle, it's not always visually going to look exactly centered the way you want, so make that fine adjustment. Once you have that, you're going to want to duplicate that ghost and throw it in the other side. Initially, I flipped it here. I'm going to flip it back in a little bit. I didn't like the way the ghosts look. They're supposed to face one direction. In my mind, that's it, just that one direction. Again, with the alignment tools, so that these two are identical. You want to align the ghost to the ghost, after the circle to the circle and make sure that they're all in the right spots. When you import art from another project, it will bring over its tool paths. In this case, I need to get rid of all of them. I'm not gonna utilize any of them, but it will help you go from project to project. First tool path is gonna be a pocket, and it's gonna be between that outer circle and the ghost. I wanna clear out all that material. And I tried it first with a 132nd, and then I went back and thought, I need to use rest machining. With the 132nd, you have to be very conservative with your speeds and feeds. 150, 250, 0.13, I might even go 0.1 to knock that down. I did a little math subtracting the depth of the cufflink from the overall depth of my aluminum so that the pocket would match the height of the cufflink. You'll notice a new button here. That's for ramping. Brand new to Carbide Create Pro. No more plunging straight into aluminum and getting that violence with your end mill. It will slide in on a ramp. We're constantly trying to improve this program for you. I went back here and selected the 1 16th inch end mill to speed up my process. Now initially I'm not getting around the corners of the ghost, but all those dimensions are about to change in just a couple of minutes. I went ahead and added an offset path that was wider than my eventual outer contour cutout. This because I wanted to have extra space to work with while cutting it out to be able to put in a chamfer. Constantly mess with your dimensions and work on your tool paths. This outer outline would also clear out the area around the edge of the ghost. Now I'm setting up my rest machine pass. This is also brand new to Carbide Create Pro. Rest machining allows you to use large diameter cutters to clear areas away, then come back and add just the fine details with the smaller cutter. 150 and 250 are even too fast here. I knock that back later to 150 and 175. But you'll notice here, even with a 132nd, I'm not capturing all the detail that I want, especially inside the eyes. I'm gonna to have to go back and adjust my art. Grab both ghosts and I'm gonna redimension them. I redimension them together to keep them exactly the same size as one another. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the alignment tools once again to get them positioned how I want. Position one exactly how you want within its own circle. Then you can utilize that ghost to position the other ghost vertically. You can then position the ghost horizontally based on the circle in which it is sitting. The alignment tools are incredibly useful. I'm gonna make some micro adjustments here. I'm gonna push up a little bit. Then I'm going to align it again. I didn't quite like that. I'm going to push up a little bit more and try it again. I'm just kind of playing with the visual aspects of it as well as the tool paths being able to get between that corner bottom of the ghost and the outer circle. With all that established, look at those eyes. Those are going to come in nicely with our rest pass. I'm going to go back and change the rest pass later though. 57 minutes is too much. I'm going to take off the ramping and just go old school plunge because we're cutting such a small amount of material. Lots of extra art out to the side, no big deal. We're gonna use layers here in a second to define some areas. Back to our tool paths. We're gonna show the simulation. Our first look in aluminum, not bad. That's where I wanna be. Haven't done my cutout yet. 
But that's all looking pretty good. And I know I can come back with the 501 in just a moment to really bring in those outer sharp edges, those 8-bit details. The 501, one of my favorites in aluminum, brass, pretty much any metal. Bring on the chamfers. First thing, take the group off both ghosts and select just the outer outlines. And you're gonna go outside 0.07 millimeters and hit apply. When those come in, you will have them both selected. I'm gonna make a chamfers layer and then move selection to layer. They immediately are a different color and outside of all the other art. I'm gonna do the same thing here with the eyes, but you need an inside offset line and move that out to the chamfers layer. We have our chamfers established. Utilize layers, name them, put them in colors you can see. Organization is highly important when you're making files. We're only going 0.35 millimeters, no offset because we're running right along that established chamfer that pulls the little point of our 501 off the edge of your art. And so you cut just with the 60 degree angle. Aluminum, engravers, 501, 60 degree V. What a useful tool. It's not gonna take long either to bring those details right in. I'm gonna run it again, just to shave off those a second time. You don't have to do that. This is me just going, I've got two more minutes. Now I need chamfers for those outer edge circles so I have a nice profile to my finished part. I will later move that to a separate chamfer layer so that that can be machined at a different depth than those inner details we just established. Pockets for the ghost, 20 minutes. That rest, we're gonna change, not 57 minutes. That's gonna get knocked down to about 12 minutes later. You always have to be adjusting to your design as you make it, and then the very first time you machine it, make adjustments along the way. And you can implement those as you think of ideas. You can go ahead and disable some toolpaths, hit stop on the machine, come back and restart halfway through your toolpathing choices. Go ahead and take advantage of the first one as a test. Second one, maybe even as a second test, you'll probably get to a pretty good result by the time you make three of anything. So I'm making initial adjustments here. I'm gonna cut down two millimeters around the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and add the inner chamfer after that. So now I'm reordering just based on tooling and tool paths. I'm gonna use the 16th inch cutter to make that little outline so I can then bring in the 501 prior to cutting these out. I'm gonna chamfer it before I have the bottoms cut out of these tiny little cufflinks. Less stress on a part that is all the way down to just the work holding. Not bad. With that rest machine, the details are really coming in well. The chamfers are not gonna show up with the 501, just how it is in the preview right now. You have to know what it looks like. Yeah, you're gonna have to know something. Not everything's given to you visually. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the cutout. Start at 2.5, because we already cut down there, and then it's T plus 0.2 to make sure we get through that last little onion skin. Show our simulation. There's our cutouts, looking good. With that, it's gonna be time to head to the machine and I'm gonna make some adjustments along the way from version one to version two that you're gonna see here in a moment with the baby blue color, but not too many. This first pass at it was just about right. A couple of little tooling errors and adjustments made to the second version, which turned out much better. That's my process for designing these ghost 8-bit cufflinks in Carbide Create Pro. I hope you picked up a couple of tips and tricks. If you have any further questions, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. And we'll see you back here again on the channel. Kevin Barnett signing off from the Carbide Studio inside Carbide 3D HQ.